I am so excited because when I was at Target yesterday just running my errands, I saw that Stephen King came out with a new book, Holly, and I actually didn't know that this was in the works. I haven't been keeping up with Stephen King as much as I used to, but I did read Fairy Tale, which was the book released before this. I actually have no idea what this is about. I actually don't even know, now that I'm thinking about it, if I need to read another Stephen King book before this. So I'm excited. It's a pretty hefty book, I'd say, but like not, like I think Fairy Tale is like 700 or 800 pages. This one looks like 450 pages, so a little bit shorter, but still a, like a pretty decently long read. And like I said, I don't really know what this book's about. All I know is that it's supposed to be controversial, or at least it's been talked about on like the news and things like that. Honestly, I don't really care. I just wanna read a good book. So I am curious to see if I'm gonna like pick up on what I'm like, oh, mm -hmm, yeah, that's controversial. So I'm gonna start reading this book today. And like I said, this is a completely blind read. I have no idea what this book is about. I have no thoughts before going into this. So I'm gonna get started on it, yay. Okay, so I'm about 60 pages in and like I said, when I started this, I had no idea what was going to be political about this. I was thinking it was going to be a little bit more subtle, but it's definitely not subtle. And for me, that doesn't really bother me because I look at this like characters in a book, just like I would like actors or characters in a movie. So yes, I, I do think that I might be getting more from this if I read like the um bill hodges trilogy which i have not yet so i don't understand some of the bill hodges references there's been some slight ones and i think there might have been a spoiler in here i'm gonna hope not because i can't think of it actually off the top of my head but it happened pretty pretty uh pretty much at the beginning of the book um so i'm not gonna look too much into it but if that's gonna bother you then that might be something you might want to research a little bit before getting into this book but anyways i'm gonna keep reading so I'm in a little bit of a hurry because I'm going to an event today with Kinship and I need to leave here in about an hour and I still have to do like all my makeup and all my hair and get dressed. <laughs> and for events, that's kind of cutting it close. But I did do a good chunk of reading on Holly last night and this morning. So I wanted to update you guys from my update last night because I think I was about like 50 pages in last night and now I am officially on page 179 so it's definitely picking up and I'm here's the thing here's here's the thing with Stephen King for me I definitely prefer his older writing style like some of my favorite Stephen King books just to give you an example or give you a frame of reference. Um, the Dead Zone is one of my favorite Stephen King books. 112263 is probably like a modern Stephen King book that I really like the writing of and it was kind of science fiction-y so it was very different from his normal like horror slasher thriller <laughs> style books. Um, Needful Things was another one of my favorites. There's obviously a lot of really good Stephen King books hence why he's so popular. This might get a little rambly because I am as we can tell, a little distracted by trying to get ready quickly. So here's the thing with this book, and I, I broached on this very briefly yesterday. The thing that I heard the most about it before coming out was that it was gonna be political or that there was a lot of political takes in it. I mentioned yesterday that doesn't really bother me because I think that like it creates a character and political sway is definitely something that a character will have. And to me, it's like, when you watch a movie and also if you follow stephen king on his social media on like twitter and stuff or i guess x now he's not shy about his political takes so a lot of the writing political writing in this book is not shocking to me i will say this though this is this is the one thing i have to say about it though that bothers me <sighs> i'm so c-word exhausted that it's not as enjoyable for me to read about. It has nothing to do with like my thoughts on, you know, different medical policies or I'm trying to like choose my words carefully here so that I don't get like, I don't know, YouTube doesn't get mad at me or whatever because it's not really what I'm talking about, but I'm just tired. I'm exhausted about hearing it. I think a lot of us, at, or I'm just gonna speak for myself, 
I'm excited to see things kind of go back to normal and be able to like go out with so much fear embedded in my day-to-day -day routine. And I know that he's kind of using this in this book to create that kind of tension because there is that constant underlying tension because Holly, her mom, died from, you know, the sickness. And it is something that you can tell she's a little bit paranoid or you it's something that you can tell she's definitely thinking about throughout the books. There's a lot of like little you're going into her mind a bit as she's thinking about her interactions with people. I think it creates an interesting environment, but an interesting environment that I probably would have enjoyed like five years from now or 10 years from now. Not necessarily what it's so much for us. Now having said that, that's not to say that I dislike this book or that I'm not enjoying it because in fact, I think it's finally picked up for me. Like around page like 80 to 100 is when the book really picked up for me. I'm just, I think this would hit me differently if it were in a couple years from now. So yeah, I'm enjoying it. I would say I'm actually probably enjoying it more than Fairy Tale. I read Fairy Tale when that first came out. I just never really talked about it on this channel. And I think I gave it like a three and a half out of five stars. And for someone who's into like classical Stephen King, I enjoy reading him right in a different type of genre. And Fairy Tale definitely had a bunch of like the tropes of a typical fairy tale with like monsters, a big conflict, hoping that the animal gets saved in the book. So it was definitely like a fun read. But for me, when I'm reading Stephen King, I want to be like, that was dark and twisted. <laughs> we'll see how this book ends because I feel like typical to Stephen King fashion, he's really got to bring it home. Like that's the one thing that sometimes is a little bit of a fail in my opinion or like something I don't enjoy as much about his writing is that like sometimes the end is a little bit of a letdown. I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything else, if I had any other thoughts while I was reading. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I should really focus on getting ready because me trying to talk while I'm doing my makeup is slowing me down and I've got to eat before I go. I got to get dressed, do my hair. I got to drop the dog off at daycare. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm running a little behind. <laughs> I just got back from the event and I filmed nothing. Fun event, it was for Kinship, which is a brand I've worked with in the past on the Beauty Breakdown and it's a skincare brand I really like. Like I'm obsessed with their sunscreen and I enjoyed it was a daytime event for once because sometimes when it's a nighttime event, like I'm very grateful to be invited and I still enjoy myself, but having to like do a full day, shower, do my hair and makeup again and get dressed and then go out all the way to LA is a lot of work. <laughs> I'm starting to become a real homebody. I set this book <laughs> down for like a freaking week and I kind of forgot where I was and where I updated you guys last on it. Okay, I'm just gonna tell you where I'm at. I read like two or three chapters last night. I really need to pick up the pace because there are so many, I don't know if I wanna say there's like a ton of details in this book, but there kind of are. Obviously it's like a missing persons shtick. And so I kind of need to be paying attention to the details. So I'm thinking about just hammering this out in the next day or two. I'm on page 263. See you. It's getting juicier. Like, it's definitely getting better. It's picking up the pace. I felt like at the beginning it was maybe a little slow uh, for, like, this length of a book. And I'm starting to kind of feel like I should have read more of, like, the Bill Hodges trilogy before I got into this because... I feel like I'm missing a lot of the nuance of Holly and her story from what I'm gathering as like a new person who's jumping in at Holly for this like little mini multiverse in a multiverse is that Holly is almost like the okay the topic of the big C word is mentioned a lot in this book and I think that's a sticking point for many people it feels very political I actually think it feels like it's explaining a lot about Holly's character like almost that she is so detail oriented you can see her mind working a thousand miles a minute processing all the details and the C thing just feels like that's a way to demonstrate that so I don't know if that makes sense but I don't know I feel like it adds a little bit to her character so anyways I'll keep you guys posted so yeah <laughs> Okay, anyways, I'll update you guys next time I get a good chunk of reading done. I don't think it's taken me this long to finish a Stephen King book in a long time. And the funny thing is, is that when I went to check the last footage that I shot for this video, I was congested recovering from a cold. And now I'm congested recovering from a different cold. It's crazy. I've never been 
catching colds like this before. I've had like two colds in two and a half months. And yes, I did test for the C and it was not that. I'm fine. The congestion for me just lasts like two or three weeks. So it's annoying. But anyways, like I said, it took me like two months to finally finish this. And I gotta say, I burned through like the last hundred pages of this book because it was really good. I really liked the ending. And so look, I'm gonna go ahead and put the timestamp here where you can skip to if you don't want any spoilers. Cause I think I was pretty good about spoilers in this video up until this point, but I'm about to spoil some stuff for you if you haven't read it yet, so skip ahead. I feel like it's been a hot minute that I've enjoyed the bad characters or like the gritty, gory antagonist that Stephen King is so good at. Cause he didn't really have that in fairy tale, but he had it in this book. Roddy and Emily reminded me a lot of Annie Wilkes from Misery because they have that like weird twisted sense of logic where you're like it it kind of makes sense but no that's not how that works where you could kind of like twist your brain and think like I could actually see how someone would think that way. I just like their almost like fall from grace of being like professors to being elderly cannibals to then how they die. They were really good bad people, in my opinion. And like I said, I think that's why a lot of people were talking about how this felt like classic Stephen King is because of that, because of kind of like I said, their goriness or like the just twisted way that they thought. As far as some of the other characters in this book, I didn't really, I wasn't connected to them like I am with some of Stephen King's other protagonists. And then we moved to Holly, who's obviously the main protagonist in this book. And I, I feel like, Again, and I kind of said this as a common thread throughout this video, I definitely would have resonated more with her if I had probably read the Bill Hodges trilogy. So as a standalone book, I'd probably give this like a 3.75. Like pacing wise, it was kind of like back and forth. I felt like sometimes it was a little slower than I wanted it to be. And then other times it was like perfect the speed it was going. And I think it was more, like I said, because a lot of the background, you would have understood a little bit more, understood the complexities of it. Had I read the three books. So if I were to go back, I probably would have tried to put this off until later because I am someone who's a constant reader who likes to immerse myself in the Stephen King multiverse. Like Castle Rock was one of my favorite little worlds within Stephen King. And so I feel like I might have gotten that same experience. So I will have to go back and read those books. I still thought it was pretty good. I actually like this more than I did fairy tale for like more modern Stephen King books. Now talking on some of the more controversial bits, like the political takes in this or the big C word or whatever. When it comes to me reading characters in a book. I don't read characters like this is a good character or a bad character. Like I enjoy all pieces of them because I think I enjoy more of the complexity of the characters versus them themselves if that, if that makes sense. So for example like Holly had kind of OCD tendencies obviously. She was a little you know specific with how she wanted to navigate the world with you know the sea word and everything like that but then she kind of also had the contrast of being like an avid smoker and not prioritizing her health in that way, but I feel like that's very human. So I enjoy that aspect, that complexity of a character. Even looking at like the bad characters, like the antagonists, I still enjoyed them for what they were because they had these things that made me want to hate them, if that makes sense. So when I'm reading characters in a book, I like that they have some different takes than mine, obviously. I felt like with Stephen King's writing in this, it, it, there was maybe one or two times that I was like, that feels like him speaking at this point or like asserting an opinion, but I felt for the most part that the political takes in this were character driven takes to like accelerate the plot, if that makes sense, or like give meaning to why something was happening in the book. And I feel like when it comes to writing as an author and modern day, especially because this book does take place in modern day, you don't do anyone a service by avoiding those topics altogether because you're afraid to touch on them. And I think that's why Stephen King is so good is because he's not afraid to touch on topics that make you uncomfortable. Like if I'm reading books about body parts and gore and things like that, it makes me uncomfortable. Like it evokes an emotion from me and I think that's good writing. Like I don't always want to have like happy emotions when I'm reading. Like there's definitely fluffy books that I'll read when I want to and I'm in that mood. But I also enjoy the like emotion that comes along with reading a book. Stephen King did have a nice afterword there. I'm sure he knew he was going to get some of these controversial opinions on his book because, you know, of the ideas in here. But like I said, most of the time I think that makes a book more interesting and I did feel like Stephen King did that with this book. So overall, like I said, a 
3.75, like a strong 3.75 as a standalone book. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I'm a bit late. I know Holly has been out for a couple months now, and I'm sure there's plenty of other videos on it, but you know, like I read these books at um, my pace, and so hopefully it's okay that these videos are coming out at my pace as well. So anyways, guys, let me know your take on this book. If you agree with some of the ideas that I had, or if you disagree, I'd be happy to read them. I always read the comment section down below. And as always, I hope you guys are happy and healthy, and don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, share with your friends and family, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys in my next video.